there's a saying, you can't outrun your fork. You can't exercise your way in a daily diet of pasta and potatoes. Most people understand what their body would look like if 50% of their daily diet came from pasta. But making these decisions for pets is difficult when carbs aren't printed on labels and comparing a kibble to a can is like comparing apples to oranges. And the pretty pictures on the packaging are allowed to mislead them. Did you know that of the 10 million tons of ingredients that go into pet food, 0.05% of it is a green leafy vegetable? It's no wonder that 50% or more of our dogs are considered overweight or obese. A healthy diet is a foundation of a healthy body. And for most dogs, that means a diet that's high in protein, moderate in fat, and low in carbs. So how do you compare a kibble to a can, to a freeze dried, to a frozen? Well, that's why we're going to our local pet supply store. So here we go. Thank you for allowing us to come in today to comparison shop and worldly pets. Thank you for coming to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I had a couple of questions for you. Yes, um, so what's the number one thing that parents look for when they uh, come in looking for dog food? I feel like most often they are coming with an issue they want to solve. Either the dog has digestive issues or they have skin problems and so they have allergies. And usually they look at something to solve that issue. Yeah. According to our pet supply store friends, there are a lot of complicated questions regarding good nutrition and what's in the bag. Do they ever ask you to say, you know, can you help me determine which one might have higher protein or more carbs or do, do you ever hear those kinds of questions? Yes, yes they do, um, especially if the dog has had a health issue when they're sent here by the vet. Yeah. So have you ever seen one standing in, a, in the pet food aisle with a, the with a calculator? I have not, but I <laughs> guess maybe we all should be because um, it's not an easy question to answer yep. without a calculator. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Our local pet supply store friends picked out four products for us to take a look at. A kibble, a can, a freeze-dried, and a gently cooked frozen. So let's take a look at their macronutrients to see which one has more protein, moderate fats, and lower carbs. Protein, fat, and carbs are macronutrients. One of the best ways to look at macronutrients in food and compare one type of food to another, like a kibble to a can, is on a dry matter basis. Dry matter compares apples to apples, or in this case, oranges to oranges, by removing the water from the nutrient equation. To calculate dry matter, simply subtract the value of moisture printed on the label from 100. The dry matter in our samples varied widely, from 15% in canned all the way up to 95% in freeze-dried. Next, you want to divide the protein on the label by the dry matter. For the record, bacon is not a healthy protein. The protein in our samples also varied widely, from 33% in kibble to a whopping 80% in gently cooked. Now let's figure out the fat as a percentage of dry matter. Take the value of the fat on the label and divide it by that dry matter percentage. Now here comes the tricky part. Carbs. Add up the percentage of protein on a dry matter basis plus the percentage of fat on a dry matter basis. Take that sum and subtract it from 100. That will give you your percentage of carbs. In the four products we looked at, the kibble variety is loaded with 47% carbs, which is actually on par with the amount of starch found in most kibble formulations. The only product in our analysis with low carbs was a gently cooked recipe with a remarkable 1% carbs. On a dry matter basis, 10% or less would be considered a low carb diet. So back to our original question of apples and oranges. Did you pick A or B? as the product with the most protein. Applying what we now know on a dry matter basis, the correct answer would have been A. It's the gently cooked recipe with high protein, moderate fat, and low carbs.